<laughs> Welcome back everybody, Buckeye Monkey here. Today we are going to do our fourth and final part of my tutorial series on the Navball Maneuver Notes. If you haven't watched parts 1, 2, and 3, I highly recommend that you do. Uh, part 1 goes over the basics, part 2 shows you how to get to the moon and back, and part 3 shows you how to get to Duna and back. Uh, I especially recommend if you, that you watch part 1, because it goes over a lot of basics that I'm going to assume that you know here. And what we are going to go over today is an orbital rendezvous. Uh, Bill has got himself in a rather stupid inclined orbit here, and he left his light on and forgot to deploy his solar panels, so he's all out of electricity. And he needs, uh, we need to send Jeb up there to connect with him and rescue him and give him a little juice, uh, give him a jump start so he can get going. You know, technically the most fuel efficient way to do this would have been to wait until uh, the Kerbal Space Center was underneath uh, Bill's orbit and to take off at an angle matching Bill's inclination. But uh, I didn't want to do that because that would have been a little easier than what we're doing here and I wanted to demonstrate all the steps you may need to take in order to rendezvous with something. So I've already got Bill set as a target here and you do that by just clicking on a ship and clicking that set target button uh, just like you do with a planet. Um, and now I'm going to set up our first maneuver node. You'll remember from previous videos that you just click on your orbit at a point and hit that add maneuver button. And before we do this, we need to match Bill's inclination. So the best way to do that is to get our uh, is to orient our screen so that both our orbit and Bill's orbit look like lines instead of a uh, circle. Then we want to set up our maneuver node right at the point where those two lines intersect. And you also remember from previous videos that the purple triangles uh, represent north and south. Those are our inclination handles. And pulling on those will tilt our orbit around the maneuver node that we have created. So we want to go ahead and get that orbit's uh, tilt to match bills. But, you know, anything we do to a with a maneuver node is going to speed us up. And so, that, except for pulling on that retrograde handle. So that is going to push out our apoapsis there. So we need to pull on the retrograde handle uh, in order to slow us back down some during this maneuver and pull that apoapsis back in to touch Bill's orbit. So once again, recapping from earlier videos, you know, the uh, prograde marker represents burning in the direction we're already traveling. The retrograde marker represents burning against the direction that we're already traveling. And that will slow us down. Uh, and once again, slowing down pulls in the opposite side of the orbit. So we pull on that handle and we want to bring in our apoapsis just enough so that it is just touching that green line that represents Bill's orbit. But as ever, uh, messing around with these maneuver nodes is a process of continued refinement. So now that we've pulled in that apoapsis, our inclination isn't quite right again. So we need to come back to a view here where we can see our inclination pretty well and, and pull on that north handle to bring ourselves back in line with Bill's inclination. And doing so has once again screwed up our apoapsis, so we need to speed back up a little bit and bring it back up to match Bill's orbit. And I think we're good now. Uh, it looks like, you know, we're we're going to touch Bill's orbit at the apoapsis. Uh, our inclination looks like it's lined up pretty good there. And one of the important things here is that our periapsis uh, is, is where our maneuver node is. is. That, that's where it's going to end up. And our apoapsis is going to be touching Bill's orbit. So our periapsis is going to be lower than Bill's orbit. And our apoapsis is going to be touching his orbit. And because our periapsis is lower, we are going to be circling around our orbit faster than Bill circles around his. So each time we go around, we are going to be catching up to Bill. And you can use these this same technique uh, if you are transferring from one planet to another and you did not wait for a good planetary alignment. You can just get yourself in a position where the apoapsis of your orbit touches the orbit of the desired planet, and your periapsis is a little bit inside. You know, the more inside you are, the faster you're going to be going around your orbit, and the more you're going to be catching up. And so you want to kind of find a, a good balance there. Uh, if you're too far in, then, you know, you're going to be going around your orbit in big chunks relative to... Uh, your target's orbit, and, and you may never get yourself to a place where 
uh, both you and your target show up at your apoapsis at the same time. So here we are uh, making this burn uh, and staging in the middle of it to get our inclination matching bills and also get our apoapsis touching his. So now that we're done with that burn, uh, we can delete that old maneuver node. And we can check out our resulting orbit here, and uh, it looks okay. Uh, it's kind of exactly what we wanted. We're matching his inclination, our apoapsis is touching his orbit, our periapsis is in a little bit. And you can see we kind of have those two orangish, maybe peach, uh, approach markers that represent um, the closest approach that we're going to have to Bill. You know, one marker represents where Bill is going to be during that approach, and another one represents where we are going to be during that approach. So the object here is to uh, create maneuver nodes and to make adjustments to our orbit in order to get those uh, two markers to slide together uh, at some point along the orbit. So the first thing I did here was just set up a quick maneuver node with a slight little adjustment. Uh, because our inclination was a little bit off after that last burn to kind of fix it and get it in, you know, totally matching Bill's inclination. And I kind of did it using the same technique as before. Uh, I angled my screen so that uh, both my orbit and Bill's orbit look like a line. I found the intersection between those two, added a maneuver node there, and then pulled on the inclination handles to get the inclination to match. Now, the next thing I want to do is uh, simply wait. Uh, I, I'm going to be catching up to Bill because my periapsis is lower than his in the orbit. So I want to wait until a point where those two uh, approach markers get pretty close to each other on their own just from going around the orbit. And then once that happens, I'll create another maneuver node and really kind of work on actually getting to Bill. So I've gone around a couple times now, and my approach markers are pretty close. And with this last pass, uh, they are going to jump closer yet again. And there we go. See, now they're pretty close to each other, so that's something I can work with. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up another maneuver node just right in front of where I am in the orbit. And then, as before, I'm just going to fiddle with these handles a little bit. Speed up a little bit so that my orbit ends up matching his a little bit better and try to get those approach markers really as close together as I possibly can. And it can be really touchy and pulling on a handle can make a big difference so you just want to pull on a handle just a little tiny bit and then hover over your approach markers and uh, see how close they are. Now after this next burn at this next maneuver node uh, our approach markers should be pretty close to each other. But that's only going to represent a point in time. I'm basically just going to kind of pass by Bill uh, in my orbit, it still isn't going to be totally matching his. So after I execute this burn, I'm going to want to set up another maneuver node uh, a little bit before we meet uh, at those approach markers and, and do a burn so that uh, to try to get my entire orbit to really match almost exactly Bill's entire orbit. So here I am executing the burn to get the uh, approach markers close to each other. And at the end of this burn, I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to cut my throttle and uh, just kind of squeak out those last few meters per second uh, because we need to be really accurate here. You know, when we're trying to get to another planet, uh, we can use that planet's gravity or its atmosphere to our advantage. But we're, we're trying to get to another ship here. There's no atmosphere, there's no gravity, uh, so we really need to be exact. And now that we've got that good approach, uh, I'm setting up another maneuver node, and, and the goal of this maneuver node is, like I said before, is simply to get my orbit to try and match Bill's orbit almost exactly. Because without doing this, like I said, I, I would just pass by him, and since my periapsis is lower, the next time around I would end up going faster, and then I'd be ahead of Bill. Well, we don't want that. We want to meet up with Bill and stay near him. So we swing around to this next maneuver node, and we execute the burn to match orbits. And since we already took care of making sure that our approach markers were near each other before we tried to match orbits, we are now putting ourselves in a position where we are going to be fairly close to Bill in almost the same orbit as him. So now we're pretty much done with the maneuver nodes and we're just gonna use that nav ball in order to get us the last kilometer or two we need to get in order to approach Bill. We want to make sure that our uh, nav ball is set on target mode, and you do that by clicking on the speed at the top of your nav ball. 
And as you can see, as I get out of my map mode, we are close enough now to Bill that we can see him off in the distance there uh, in our normal ship view. Now that we've got close to him, now that we've matched orbits, the uh, object of the game is going to be uh, herding our prograde and retrograde markers onto the prograde and retrograde targets. So the, the prograde and retrograde target markers are those uh, pink markers, and they represent uh, the direction exactly towards our target and the direction exactly away from our target. So what we want to do here is kind of pick a point in between our retrograde marker uh, and the prograde target marker. Because as you'll remember, whenever we burn on a point in the ball, the, uh, the retrograde marker is going to want to run away from us, and the prograde marker is going to want to come towards us. And there we go. We've kind of pushed away that retrograde marker, and we've pulled the prograde marker onto that pink target circle. Which means we are now headed straight at Bill. But you know, Bill's not moving in a straight line, and neither are we. We're both orbiting, and our orbits are still slightly different. So as we both continue to move in our orbits, uh, that prograde marker is going to want to wander away from the target. So we just have to keep our eye on it and uh, keep shepherding it back when it tries to wander. And once again, when you're working with the prograde marker, uh, it is going to want to come towards where you're pointing on the ball. So you want to think of it as pulling the prograde marker towards the target marker. Now here I'm just kind of pointed straight at Bill, straight at my prograde marker there, and, and I burned a little bit to speed up uh, to get myself to him a little bit faster. And then correcting my direction a little bit again, pulling that prograde marker right back up onto that pink target. And now we're looking pretty good. Uh, we're headed, you know, straight at Bill. We're coming in at a decent speed, but not too fast. But, uh, you know, after pulling that prograde ba marker back on there again, we're, we're going to want to start thinking about slowing down. You know, we don't want to zip by Bill, and we certainly don't want to crash into him. So at this point, we want to flip our ship around and start working with that retrograde marker instead. And it's the same principle, except in reverse. You know, when we burn somewhere, the retrograde marker is going to want to move away from where we're pointing. So we kind of want to keep pushing that retrograde marker right onto the target. And since now we're making these burns uh, close to our retrograde marker, whenever we make a burn, it's going to slow us down relative to Bill. So as we're coming in for our final approach, uh, we want to just keep shepherding that retrograde marker right back up onto the mark and, you know, keep slowing ourselves down so that as we come in close, we're not going too fast. You know, here we're only about 140 meters away, and so we want to keep our speed pretty low, you know, maybe one meter per second, maybe a little faster than that. But here's where we want to be real careful, you know, we don't want to crash into Bill. So we've got ourselves pretty close, and we're going pretty slow, uh, relative to Bill. So now it's time to go ahead and turn around and point back at him and start using our RCS system. You know, the, the H and N keys represent forward and back with the RCS. And you have J and L, which are left and right, and I and K, which are up and down. And you still have your uh, WASD to tilt yourself around, and your Q and E to spin yourself around on your axis. And now when we are pointed at Bill like this and we're using our H and N keys to uh, speed up or slow down and, and shepherd that prograde marker, we, we got to remember that things work differently depending on whether we're using the H or N key. You know, hitting H speeds us up, so th that's pretty much the same as burning our engine. So the uh, prograde marker is going to want to come towards where we're aiming. But if we use the N to reverse and slow down, um, that is going to want to push away the prograde marker from where we're pointing at. So we just use these two principles of pushing and pulling and speeding up and slowing down to get ourselves in close to Bill uh, while staying aimed at him and not crashing into him. And once you do get in close, uh, you know, there's really not much to it uh, other than just spending a lot of time and being very careful. You know, with the default interface without any mods installed, uh, docking can be a little frustrating. And it basically consists of, you know, trying to align your ship with your target ship and gently get those docking ports to nudge into each other. And it's really just a painstaking process. Probably the, the best way to approach it is to uh, constantly change your camera angle to make sure that you are not drifting off in some unexpected direction. 
and just keep uh, fine tuning everything and watch the little white jets as as you hit a button. You know, when you're constantly moving your camera angle around, it's kind of hard to keep track of which button is going to push you in which direction relative to where your camera is pointing. So whenever you uh, change your camera direction, just go ahead and hit a button and watch the jets. And if it's the wrong pair, uh, go ahead and immediately hit the opposite one to kill any velocity that you accidentally hit. And, you know, that that's pretty much it. You, you just want to keep uh, slowly, gently nudging yourself in there. Uh, if you overdo it, you're, you're definitely going to overshoot your target. And if you don't ca change your camera angle often enough, you're probably going to end up drifting in a direction that you didn't expect. And I do that here, and I end up missing the first time. And I kind of have to realign myself and, and come back at it uh, and go for it at another try. But, you know, I, I, I finally end up getting it there. And once you do get yourself properly aligned and do get those uh, docking ports close enough to each other, you know, they'll kind of take over the process. And uh, the magnets in them will pull your two ships together. And then there you go. You'll be joined. So, orbital rendezvous accomplished. And now our ship is pushing electricity over to Bill's ship. And now he's got enough juice he's going to be able to... Uh, deploy his own solar panels, which he was dumb enough to forget to do before. And now this time he won't run out when he forgets and leaves his light on. So, there we have it. Thanks everybody for watching this series. Uh, I hope that I was able to teach you what you needed to know about the navball and maneuver nodes in order to, you know, invent your own missions, go places you want to go, in, in the steps that you want to take to get there and really get out and explore the solar system, uh, you know, in your own way, in your own time, instead of having to follow somebody else's step-by-step -step directions. And while this is the end of the series, this is not the end of the videos I'm going to be making. Uh, so if you like this one, please hit that subscribe button. And take all your newfound knowledge and get out there and dominate the galaxy.